Welcome to another episode of Beat the Bogey. I'm Mitchell Anthony, Chief Investment Officer for Mitchell Anthony Capital Management, and I'm here today with one of my analysts, Dane May, um, and we're here to talk about news flow. Uh, there's, there's been news flow this week, uh, as always, and actually, you know, on top of all this news that we've been getting on the coronavirus for the last several weeks, we actually had some news on regulatory changes to retirement vehicles. Uh, in fact, uh, the SECURE Act went into effect um, this month. And so we're going to talk about that and the news flow associated with that. So stay tuned in. We'll be right back with another exciting episode of Beat the Bogey. Hello world, wake me up to another good, good morning, time to go. Got that smile upon my face, cause there's excitement in the chase, this I know. Okay, we're back, and we're here to talk about the SECURE Act, which was actually put into place on January 2nd of 2020. Uh, it was passed in December of 2019 by Congress. Um, it's an act that uh, the government uh, put together, I think, to try to get more tax revenue. Um, not necessarily a lot of great news for consumers and, uh, and investors and, and retirement uh, entities, but uh, um, there is some benefits depending upon who you are. So the, the SECURE Act um, has several features to it that are interesting. Let's talk a little bit about it, Dane. In terms of what we like about the SECURE Act, what was the good news regarding the SECURE Act? And, and what exactly is it, Yeah, to say, I, to say the least? So in its simplest turn, it's a retirement bill. But it also impacts 529 savings plans, so it's a little ambiguous. But, uh, you know, the good news, let's talk about the good news, Mitch. So, first off, required minimum distributions no longer are, have to begin when you turn 70 and a half. Those get pushed back to 72 years old. Huge benefit for those who don't need to take the money. Secondly... Be before we get into yeah. that for a second, though, let's just talk about what the SECURE Act affects. Okay. The SECURE Act is an act that was passed by Congress, uh, and it affects qualified retirement plans. It affects IRAs, and it affects annuities, and it affects 529 plans. Correct. And it's, it's putting kind of new restrictions on how you can take money out, but it's also giving you some ability to put money into these vehicles in different ways than they had before. So let's talk first about how it affects IRAs. What, what, what is the SECURE Act? doing to IRAs in terms of the good. The good. What's the good? The good. Start with the good. So the good is, as I just previously mentioned, um, those who do not need to take the money for their current required minimum distribution, the age of 70 and a half, now can push that back till 72 years old. So in the event that you don't need that money within your IRA and, and the government currently is making you take those required min minimum distributions, you can push that back until 72 and really continue to grow your assets. So a year and a half. So year and they half. gave us an extra year and a half to leave the money in the IRA. Correct. Okay. So that's one of the gives. Um, what else is good in it? What else is good is previously um, at 70, 70 and a half again, I believe, was the cap of where you could no longer contribute to your IRA. Now, you had to stop funding IRAs once you attained age 70 and a half. Even if you kept working, you couldn't fund an IRA any longer. Correct. But now under the SECURE Act, you can continue to fund IRAs. Is that correct? That is correct. And with the workforce working longer and longer and people living longer and longer, that's really important. As long as you're working, you can continue to contribute to your IRA. So that's good. Um, but the other good news in the SECURE Act is that it, it has given uh, younger people who are having children some access to their IRA funds without penalty. Is that in fact correct? That is true. So for people like me who are looking to have kids in the next few years, I can still feel comfortable contributing to my IRA even in the event that I may need to pull some of that cash out at a later time. If I have a kid and I need to um, go buy a baby carriage, go buy a baby crib, um, I can pull that cash out without paying that uh, a harmful 10% penalty I, I would before. Now, do keep in mind that still counts as a distribution and will be considered 
taxable against your income, but that 5000 could come in hand. So there's a limit on how much you can take. You know, if, if you've had a child or you've adopted a child, you get access to your IRA money, but it's only up to $5,000 of your total IRA holdings. Correct. And is that for a family or is that per individual? That is per individual. So per individual. So a family of two, a mom and dad who each had IRAs, they could get access to $10,000 of their IRA funds if they had a child uh, and use that for anything they want. Very helpful. Right? No 10% no penalty for taking it out, but ordinary income tax. Correct. Okay. So that's, a, that's another good thing. The other good thing that they did with um, qualified retirement plans is they're allowing you to use 529 plans for things you couldn't do before. Um, I believe you're allowed to use them for um, paying for K-12 K to 12 education, right? Tell, tell me more about that. Yeah, so they've really unlocked a lot here. Um, you know, you can now really leverage this 529 savings plans for um, not just college, but K through 12. If you want to send your uh, child to kindergarten, private kindergarten, you can now leverage this 529 savings plan all the way up through high school. If you want to leverage it for an apprenticeship, <coughs> certain apprenticeships are approved and you can use this 529 saving plan for that. Um, they also have homeschooling. Uh, homeschooling, yeah. If you want to homeschool, if you choose to homeschool your child, you can take the funds and use that for homeschooling. So you've got access. Uh, you can pay for private schooling, non-college private schooling with 529 plans. You can still pay for college with it. Uh, you can pay for homeschooling of yeah. your children, and you can pay for apprenticeships. Absolutely. So um, better use of uh, the 529 plan, but only. $10,000 can be used for these types of things. That is correct. Yes, okay. So, so that's, that's the good news. news. Yeah. Now, now there are the, the bad news for the consumer, and the real reason I think why the government did this, which was to raise taxes, is um, the, the, they've kind of taken away what was called the stretch IRA. What was the stretch IRA? The stretch IRA was essentially an inherited IRA, which a lot of our clients participated in and a lot of clients have. Um, and uh, so, so what it essentially does is a lot of people have been calling this the death, the death of the stretch IRA, the, this, this act. And essentially, it now, whereas previously you could inherit this IRA and based off of your life expectancy, you could withdraw that fund throughout uh, the life expectancy. Now, whenever you inherit the IRA, you have 10 years to withdraw the entire balance. Okay, okay, so, so, the, the, so the, what, what they've, they've done, done is, is, is they're, they're forcing us to take money out of IRAs that we inherit. So, so if, if my father dies, and he has an IRA, and, and I inherited it, in the past I was able to uh, take distributions from that IRA over my life expectancy. I had to begin them immediately, but I had to take them out over my life expectancy. That's what's the past rule. The new rule is when you inherit an IRA, you have to get all of the money out within 10 years, correct? That is correct. But you don't have to take it out in a linear manner like you did before. Before you actually had to take it out in a linear manner over your life expectancy. Now you can do it any way you want. You could take it all out on the 10th year, or you could take it all out, you know, or you could take it out in equal increments over 10 years. So you've, you've got some flexibility there. And what does that mean? It's going to require some planning uh, uh, in terms of how to maximize um, the IRA, right? That's correct. And, and it will require a lot of planning. And it, there are also some exceptions to that rule, Mitch. And so if you inherit an IRA and you're a spouse, you have an exception from that rule and you can continue to take it based off of the previous rules, which is through your life expectancy. Um, so it doesn't apply to a spouse. It doesn't apply to a spouse. There's a few other people it doesn't apply to. And that is if you have, uh, if someone is disabled, if someone is chronically ill, or if the inheritor is within 10 years of your age. Okay, so that's good to know. Good to know. So the, 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 the IRA that you inherit from a parent, basically, or um, a non-spouse person has to be taken out within 10 years. Correct. Okay. Yep. And, uh, and then you have to kind of figure out how to do it. If you're inheriting an IRA when you're working, you may choose, I'm not going to take any right now because I'm going to retire in five years and then I'll start taking it out when I'm in a lower tax bracket. But you're setting yourself up for having to take more out per year 
in doing that. But once again, some planning that needs to be done. What else do we know about this, the, uh, the um, SECURE Act? How else is it affecting uh, consumers? Is there, is, there any, is there any other pros? We know there's some cons. Is there any other exciting news that uh, it benefits, uh, uh, how it benefits investors? Yeah, now there's some exciting things that are less for the investors and more so for employees, potential employees. And what they've done is for, uh, they've made it easier and cheaper for employers to create retirement plans for their employees. Um, and they've done this by being able to um, team up with other companies or um, essentially pool these retirement accounts with other small businesses. The other thing we know about there is there is some changes within the act to how annuities within IRAs work. And that hasn't actually been made clear to us just yet and be a subject maybe of another beat the bogey episode. But there are some changes to the way annuities function within IRAs that this act uh, plays upon. Uh, certainly this act may make funding a Roth IRA a little more ap appealing than it's been in the past. Um, but all in all, I don't think it's a, it's a big deal. It just forces people who inherit IRAs who are non-spouses to have to get the money out within 10 years where it used to be they could maybe leave it in over their life expectancy, which was 20 or 30. So that's kind of the, the, the bad rub here. Yeah, absolutely. And, and let's talk a little bit before we close this out about what our clients do or what potential clients do with their money in the event they don't need it in that 10 years. Yeah, it's, you know, generally when you have IRA money that, that uh, when you have to take a distribution from an IRA and you really don't need to spend the money, obviously you have other vehicles that you could put it into to keep the money working. But you're going to have to pay tax, unfortunately. Whether If you move the money out of an IRA into a taxable account, into your family trust account, or into a joint account with your spouse, or into an individual account in your wife's name, or in your name, you obviously can... Uh, keep that money working and keep it invested as we try to do for our clients, but you're going to have some tax consequence that you're going to have to deal with. Correct. So with each of those distributions, you know, we could establish a Roth IRA for that client and transfer those funds into that Roth IRA for them. There you would go. Would be one example. There you go. Yep. All right. Well, I think that sums it up. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed today's episode of Beat the Bogey. Stay tuned because we'll have another episode coming next week. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm going for the ride And by myself I am alive And I saw Still I run towards the wind And let the child